Hi there. Now, in this question, we're given a small smooth pulley which is suspended from a fixed point by a light chain. And a light inextensible string passes over the pulley. Particles P and Q of masses 0.3 kilograms and m kilograms respectively are attached to the opposite ends of the string. And the particles are released from rest at a height of 0.2 meters above the horizontal ground with the string taut. The portions of the string not in contact with the pulley are vertical and P we're told strikes the ground with a speed of 1.4 meters per second. Subsequently P remains on the ground and Q does not reach the pulley. And what we've got to do is to calculate the acceleration of P while it is in motion and the corresponding tension in the string. And then go on to find the value of M. So if you'd like to have a go at this question and haven't done so already, just give you a moment to pause the video. Do come back when ready and you can check your work solution against mine. OK, welcome back if you had a go. So first of all, what I'd want to do is mark on the forces acting on the particle P and Q. And we've got the weight of each particle acting down. The weight of P, we're told its mass is 0.3, so it's going to be 0.3 multiplied by G, and that would be measured in Newtons. As for the weight of Q, well, its mass is M, so its weight is going to be Mg newtons. There's going to be a tension acting on each particle and that's going to be upwards and it's going to be exactly the same. Quite often we're asked why are the tensions the same and it's because it's passing over a smooth pulley. So they're the forces then acting on P and Q. What I want to mark on next is the accelerations of the particles and we're told that P basically moves down. Okay, P strikes the ground with a speed of 1.4 meters per second. So because it started from rest, we'll mark that in here as zero here, and it hits the ground with a speed of 1.4 meters per second, then clearly it's changed its speed and so it's going to have an acceleration. We'll mark a double arrow in there and that acceleration is going to be A. Now because the string is inextensible that means that Q will move up with exactly the same acceleration. So we'll put that in as A. Now we've got to calculate the acceleration of P first of all while it's in motion. And to get the acceleration A here, I can just apply an equation for constant acceleration, a SUVAT based equation if you like. So in part one, if we take the positive sensors downwards, then we've got the variables S for displacement, U for initial velocity, V for final velocity, A for acceleration and T for time. Now I know S, the displacement, it started from here, Moving in the positive sense, it would be 0 0.2, 0 0.2 meters. I'll just leave out the units at this stage just because of the room that I've got. U, the initial velocity, well that was zero. It started from rest. V, the final velocity, is 1.4 meters per second. And it's in the positive sense here. The acceleration, well that's what we're trying to find and as for time I don't know the time. So all I need to do is connect these variables here, S, U, V and A. And the equation that we use is V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. And so if we substitute for our values for V we've got 1.4 so that's going to be 1.4 squared equals u squared, well that's zero, so we'll just leave that out. And then we've got two times a times s, the displacement, which is 0.2. And so if we rearrange this for a, we therefore have got a equals 1.4 squared, and two times 0.2 is 0.4, so we've got 0.4a. So if I divide both sides by 0.4, 
we get a equals 1.4 squared divided by 0.4. And if you work this out, it comes to exactly 4.9. 4.9 meters per second per second then for that acceleration. Now in the next part, we've got to calculate the tension in the string. So we need to find out what T is. And to do this, what I'm going to do is consider particle P. And in considering particle P, I'm going to apply Newton's law of motion in the downward sense. That's F equals MA in the downward sense. So I signify that by saying I'm resolving downwards, okay? Taking downwards as positive. So what is the resultant force downwards? Well, we've got all the weight, which is 0.3G. So 0.3G. The tension acts in the opposite sense to what I've taken as positive, so it's going to be minus T. And this is the resultant force on P, and it equals the mass times the acceleration. The mass is 0.3, okay, 0.3, and the acceleration we've just worked out is 4.9. So rearranging this for T, if I add T to both sides and subtract this term from both sides, then I've got therefore T equals 0.3G, 0.3 times G, G being 9.8, that's what we'll take G as. And then we've got to subtract this term here, 0.3 multiplied by 4.9. And if you work this out, you end up with T, okay, we'll just put therefore T, equals 1.47. And that's going to be measured in Newtons. Okay, so that's part one done. Now we move on to part two, where we've got to find the value of M the mass of Q. And to do this, what we need to do is to consider particle Q. So if we look at particle Q, and again, on this one, I'm going to apply Newton's law of motion. Force equals mass times acceleration, in other words. But because it's moving upwards, I'm going to apply Newton's second law upwards. So I'm going to resolve upwards as positive. So what is the resultant force upwards now on Q? Well, we've got all of T acting upwards. So you've got that tension, which is 1.47 Newtons. So we've got 1.47 Newtons. And we've got to subtract the weight of Q acting downwards. So that's negative mg. Okay. And this is the resultant force which is equal to the mass, m, times the acceleration, a, which is 4.9. So taking g to be 9.8, then what I've got here is therefore 1.47. I'm going to add mg to both sides, so it's going to give me 1.47 equals 9.8m. Okay, taking g as 9.8 and adding that to 4.9. M. And what I've got now is 1.47 equals 14.7M. So if I divide both sides by 14.7, M being equal to 1.47 divided by 14.7, then what I get is 0.1. So M equals 0.1.